What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash Am I the Butthole? If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it massively helps out our channel. And I cannot express that enough. And let's just get straight in to today's stories. Much love, guys. Now our first story comes from his loyal concubine and it does have an update that follows it. So this is, am I the arsehole for not rescheduling my surgery for a third time? So a little too much information backstory. I, female 29, need to have a hysterectomy due to uncontrollable issues stemming from having my cervix removed due to pre-cancer cells all over it. I've been living with near constant periods for two years and my doctor is the one who asked me if I wanted to have the surgery. He gave me a couple of months to think about it and I finally decided to bite the bullet since my issues are causing daily problems, including having to miss work because I need to be in the bathroom when I really flare up and can't even go an hour without soaking through an overnight pad and I rely on the bus to get to work which takes an hour and a half. I've tried different birth controls to try and stop my period because I don't have a cervix. It is just impossible to stop bleeding so much. The first time it was rescheduled was in December and the hospital shut down for everyone but emergency patients due to COVID getting really bad in my area. Understandable. The second time was when my parents who would be babysitting while I'm in the hospital told me they were uncomfortable with me getting it early February due to COVID and not wanting me to bring it back out to them when I get out. Here's the issue. My sister, Melissa, 30, is getting practically her whole body plastic surgeried less than a month after my surgery is scheduled. She scheduled hers after we found out when my surgery would be and expects her mum to take care of her fully, like a baby pretty much, with how much work she's getting done at once. My stepmom fully agreed to it, knowing it was less than a month from my surgery and knowing she would have to take care of my daughter and me for a week. Today, my stepmom told me she wants me to reschedule again so she can devote her time and energy into preparing for taking care of her daughter. I told her I can't reschedule anymore because I'm about to lose my job with how much time I've had to take off work due to my issues. I also said if she feels that way, could I at least ask her to watch my daughter when I'm in the hospital and then I'll figure something out when I get out. She got very offended and said I was being rude and inconsiderate of Melissa because I just want to stop having my period, which made me upset because we talked through everything for hours when I was originally told the last options were to either live with it or to get my surgery. Now my stepmom refuses to talk to me. My dad won't get in the middle of this and I'm left feeling like I'm the arsehole because I refuse to reschedule a surgery that I consider very needed. So Reddit, am I the arsehole? Now, I'm going to ask a couple of questions because I like to ask you guys rather than just going to Google sometimes because I, I love reading your answers, right? But one of the things that jumped out to me is, you know, is when she's saying that she gets her period like constant. So she's like bleeding pretty much constantly. Isn't that dangerous at all? Like, isn't there a danger of losing too much blood by doing that? I might be totally wrong there and going totally off on one, but it's just a question that popped into my head while I was reading that. And anyway, let's just say the dad absolutely sucks totally in this story i'm not getting in the middle of that that's a great thing very helpful cheers dad and next you rescheduled it once and they're just playing down a medical issue here she's getting plastic surgery cosmetic surgery and you're getting something that's medically needed it just i'm, I'm just sat here scratching my head thinking what the hell surely you can see the priority in this matter absolutely not the arsehole in my opinion and i hope you do have some friends or someone else to help because your family sounds like they, they suck. <laughs> Sorry, I know. it sounds a bit harsh saying that, but it, that's what it comes across to me. Let's read a couple of the comments to see what they say, and then we shall move on to the update. So Purple Goat in a tutu, great name, says, Not the arsehole. Your surgery is medically needed, and you already delayed once for your parents, but your dad is a special form of arsehole, since you are his kid, and he is pushing the work of helping you onto your stepmother. She's a bit of an arsehole for asking you to delay needed surgery twice. And false explanation says, not the arsehole, yikes. Is there anyone else, like other family or friends, who might be able to help out? OP does reply to this saying, unfortunately, most of my friends and family have moved pretty far away. The only people left that my daughter is comfortable with are my parents. 
And Cinnamon Pumpkin says, not the arsehole, I'm so horrified for you. Your medically required surgery is more important than your stepsister's Kardashian makeover. You need this surgery. Tell them the doctors fear for your health if you postpone it again. I have endometriosis, so I totally get arseholes not taking this stuff seriously. And finally, Golden Gracie says, not the arsehole, contact your doctor's office. Explain that you need written documentation regarding the medical necessity of the surgery and aftercare requirements so that you can have the necessary time off work and help with childcare after the surgery. Give your stepmom a copy of that documentation. Tell her you want to be clear that the surgery is not elective, but medically required, and her doctor has set specific requirements for help needed after the surgery. If that doesn't work, explain to her that the only person whose opinion counts is the doctor, and he says that the surgery is mandatory, ASAP. And now we're gonna head over to the update to see what that says. And the update says, and it's from his loyal concubine, Update, am I the arsehole for refusing to reschedule my surgery for a third time? First of all, I never expected to get as much attention as I did. Thank you all so much for your input and for helping me find alternatives. Now here's what happened since. My best friend apparently had been talking to her husband. They decided that even though that they have four kids, one whom is just seven months, she will fly in from Chicago and stay with me for two weeks to help take care of my daughter and myself. I had no idea that they were talking about it as she always just talked about how they barely managed with the two of them to take care of their kids. But her husband knows we are more like sisters than friends and he honestly was appalled at how my parents were treating this so he insisted he could take care of the kids. She will be missing Easter with them but she says that she wants to be here for me. My stepmom has gone no contact and my dad has said he will drive me to and from hospital but that's it. He's barely talking to me, which is normal on his part as he's very stoic and has never really talked to me much, even growing up. I do feel like a big weight has been lifted and I'm glad I can go ahead with my surgery. It sucks that my parents don't really care about it, but there's not much I can do. Melissa has always been the favorite and I think my stepmom going no contact and my best friend doing what she's doing is really showing me who my real family is. Again, thank you to everyone. And in the end, I think this is a positive outcome in the end. Even so, that stepmom has gone no contact. She sounded like a very, I don't know, I was going to say toxic person, but that might be a bit strong. But not someone that I think I'd be comfortable keeping around in my life if they weren't willing to help with this. With this. And the way that they played it down in the first story where they said, um, you just want to get your period fixed, that kind of thing. It's like, no, this is a medical procedure that OP needs, you know. But... Well done, OP, and well done to have to having such wonderful friends. With that positiveness, let's take it on to the next story. Don't know why I'm waving my hand for. <laughs> and our next story comes from Flight Neat. Am I the arsehole for telling my mum I'm not going to be her second choice just because my brother died? Me, 23 male, and my mum don't have the best relationship. My parents broke up when I was two. My mum was trying to do college, so I was mostly with my dad, and she'd have me every weekend. When I was six, she got married and then a year later had my half brother, Tommy. After that, she was canceling our meetups or days I go over there because she was busy, missing out on school stuff and then birthdays. I barely saw her after that and her reason was always being busy with my half bro. I never even met him, like at all. I could also tell when I was around, her husband didn't like me. He always was serious around me and never actually spoke to me. Years went on and it just went to total no talking at all. My dad got married to my stepmom when I was 10 and she's really great. So nine months ago, I heard from my grandparents on Facebook that Tommy passed. I don't know the full details. All I know it was some accident and he had serious injuries. Thought about reaching out to my mum, but it felt weird since we haven't talked in years. She ended up the one messaging me. First telling me about what happened to Tommy, then apologizing for not keeping contact with me for years. Pretty much she wants to meet us and for us to have a relationship again. It just felt off to me that she's doing it only now after Tommy passed. I know some of you are going to say losing him maybe made her realize she was a shit mum to me, but still. If this hadn't happened, then it's like she never would have reached out and wouldn't be trying. I told her this too, and I'm not interested in us having anything at the moment. This made her push even more that we need to do this, and it just seemed like she was not going to let this go. So I said, I'm sorry for what happened to him, but I'm not going to be her second choice. And she can't expect me to want her back in just because she lost one child and decided she'd go back to the other. Maybe in the future I'll feel differently, but not right now. 
My mum hasn't left me alone. And when last time I talked to my grandparents, they gave me shit about what I told her. And I shouldn't have said that to her after she'd lost her son. So I'm not sure if what I said was too harsh. Saying I'm not interested in her right now just because my brother's not around anymore. And it's like I'm her only option now. It's just how I feel since she dropped out of my life once she had another family. Was I an asshole? And I was just looking around and I found this comment from someone asked OP uh, how many years it was that there was no contact kind of thing. And they said, I want to say around 14-ish years. For the first couple of years after she had him, we were still sort of in communication, just not really seeing her much. So she left you for 14 years and then decides to come back into your life once, you know, the other child had passed away. I can't say you're the asshole in this situation because you're very valid in feeling that way and for saying what you said too. You can't just leave you for all those years and then decide that, oh, I'm going to walk back into her life now. I have another child kind of thing. That sounds a bit harsh, I know, but it's just the way it feels to me and I, I totally get what OP is saying in this situation. I don't think you're the asshole at all. But G-Man Boyd says, not the asshole in the slightest in my opinion. This shouldn't be a question in your head, man. Don't feel bad about not wanting a relationship. She ditched you for her other son and now only wants you now that he's gone. Fuck off. This is harsh, but that's karma. Completely up to you, but she doesn't deserve you, pal. And three for a girl says not the arsehole and your grandparents are also the arseholes. If they've watched the situation unfold over years and only now decided to intervene. Even if she's genuinely regretting the past, that's her problem because it was entirely her actions that put her in this place now. You aren't an emotional support animal that she can pick up when she needs it. It's very reasonable you don't want to be subbed in for Tommy when you were already swapped for him once. She's going to need to demonstrate that she wants to get to know you as a person, not a substitute son. And she's got a lot of explaining to do. She made you a stranger. She doesn't get to call on strangers for help. And Ananga Ranga says, My son died, but wait, I got a spare, don't I? Not the arsehole. And Nolton says, What you said was harsh and probably not the best way to go about it, but she was pushing for a relationship that you were not interested in. She has been an absentee parent for, what, 17 years now, if I'm reading this correctly? If a relationship is started again at that point, it has to be on your terms, not hers. And it doesn't seem like she's respecting that. Keep in mind that she fucked up her relationship with you. So not the arsehole, your mother needs to respect your choices. And now I turn this one to you guys. What do you think OP should do in this situation? Do you think they was harsh for what they said or not? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story comes from, am I the arsehole hijab? Am I the arsehole for backing out of being a bridesmaid for my friend rather than take off my hijab? Even after the other bridesmaids bought modest dresses to accommodate me. We've been friends for five years, and in the whole time she's known me, I've never taken my hijab off, around men from outside my family. I've taken off in front of her before, but only because I was only around women, and she knew this was the case. When we were trying on bridesmaids' dresses, I offered to wear a different dress to the other bridesmaids, or wear a covering over the dress so they didn't all have to conform to my needs regarding the modesty of the dress. We settled on all wearing a dress that I could wear, as the bride wanted us to match. I was happy that they accommodated me and none of them seemed to mind wearing a more modest dress than they might have worn otherwise. Yesterday, I asked the bride if she wanted me to wear a scarf that matched the dress or a different color. She was startled and told me she was expecting me not to wear a hijab because when she said she wanted us all to match, she thought I understood she meant not just the dresses, but that I would not be wearing a hijab. She also said that she thought I would be okay with it since I took my hijab off while trying on the dresses, which I only did because I was only around women and I was trying on some dresses that go over my head, so I felt the hijab would have fallen off anyway. I said that if I could not wear a hijab as a bridesmaid, I would not be able to be a bridesmaid. My friend is now frustrated as some of the other bridesmaids have made alterations to the dresses and cannot return them. And she would have wanted them to wear a different dress if it were not for my modesty needs. She's also annoyed that I have backed out as now there is an uneven number of bridesmaids and groomsmen. She says she tried her best to make a compromise with me. The modest dress but no hijab and I should have explicitly said I would need to wear my hijab and not taking it off or trying on dresses. I think she should have explicitly asked if I would go without before committing to a compromise I didn't even know about. Am I the arsehole? 
Again, it's one of these ones I don't understand. This person's been friends with you for five years and you've always worn your hijab. So I don't understand how they could not know the significance behind the hijab and ask you to take it off and think that would be an acceptable thing to do. You would have thought, again, a friend of five years would have questioned what it's all about and the meaning behind it and why she never takes it off although she did once but why generally she never takes it off and what it means to her surely that conversation must have come up at some point but it also doesn't in general doesn't take a genius to work out that the hijab just doesn't come off for any old reason you know i mean come on it's not that difficult you're absolutely not the asshole in this situation i'm sorry that you're having to deal with a so-called friend like this but Throwaway says, God, no, you are not the arsehole. It's not like you've decided to wear something to spite her. This is part of your religion and culture. You should not feel like you have to take it off because your friend doesn't think it will fit her wedding aesthetic. Your friend needs to educate herself and do better, not the arsehole. Edit, wow everyone, I'm astounded by how many upvotes my comment has. I just want to clear one thing up. There are some Muslims who choose not to wear a hijab and that is okay. But in this case, she is a hijabi and she should not feel forced to take her hijab off because her friend doesn't think it will fit her wedding. The hijab is not a symbol of oppression unless you are forced to wear it. And ah, too much pressure says, not the arsehole. If she knows you well enough for you to be a bridesmaid in her wedding, she should know when you need to wear a hijab. Your culture is not a compromise. And shady book dealer says, not the arsehole. She should just let you wear a hijab. I don't see what the big deal is. That would solve all her problems right now. And Lee Ramby says, just tell her to compromise and uninvite any male guests to the wedding. And I guess her fiance. <laughs> and Veloxaraptor says, holy crap, not the arsehole. It's part of your beliefs and she needed to consult with you. Even if it's her big day, you don't get to dictate things like that. Sorry you're dealing with that. And there was a small edit slash update which said edit i messaged the other bridesmaids explaining that i can't be a bridesmaid anymore as the bride doesn't want me wearing a hijab and the responses are coming in very much anti-bride so far i'm hoping that the others disagreeing with her on this will snap her out of it it seems like she's overall stressed and focusing on this one thing too much and hopefully if she stops to think about it she'll register that it's not a big deal if i'm wearing a hijab and now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation and how would you deal with it? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story is from Isedge. Am I the arsehole for not wanting to discuss my deceased sister? Before I 19 female was born, my parents had another kid, Hannah. When Hannah was eight, she died due to an accident. I was born two years later. Growing up, she was constantly mentioned. We went to her grave multiple times a year. Pictures were hung in our house, stories were told. I wouldn't say it overshone me in any way. I still got to be my own person. My parents never wanted me to be Hannah and they celebrated my accomplishments. But still, she was always talked about and I was always told I had a sister. Asked how I felt about her and it took me years to admit to myself that I feel nothing for her. I never met her and due to her death, she's always been made into this saint-like figure. It's like she's the person I've watched documentaries about. I have respect for her, but I don't consider her my sister. If others ask if I have siblings, I say no. Now that I'm living on my own, I don't visit Hannah. I don't display the pictures of her that my parents gave to me over the years. I told a few close friends and my ex as I felt they had the right to know, but outside that, there's nothing to discuss. Recently, my mum was talking about Hannah a lot. I've told her before that I don't want to talk about Hannah anymore, but she doesn't listen. The other day, she kept going on about a story I've heard a million times, and I said, I thought I told you I was done talking about her. My mum replied, she's your sister. And I said, technically maybe. My mum got really offended, and I pointed out we weren't even raised together. I don't know her. I feel nothing for her. My mum started crying and called me heartless. She said that I don't have to discuss Hannah, but she's not going to stop just because I want to pretend she never existed. My dad has said, what I said about Hannah is near unforgivable and I need to reevaluate my priorities. Am I the asshole? You know, I, I kind of come into this one thinking about, you know, it's kind of heartless some of the things were saying to her parents, but at the same time, they were also crossing boundaries. OP doesn't want to talk about their sister. They, as I said, they don't really know her and I can totally get that. 
that they didn't know them growing up and it's like they've been watching a documentary their whole life about this person but don't really know them so how can they feel any love for them in in some sense but at the same time i think that op does need to have some empathy for their parents because that must be an absolutely tragic and horrific thing to go through and live with every day and i don't think it's something you could ever get over but also from the parents side i think they also need to respect opie's boundaries and the fact that they don't want to talk about her anymore it must be pretty awkward when you don't feel when you're feeling that way about you know the sister that's passed away and they keep bringing it up in a way when they're trying to make you have feelings for that person but there's nothing there you know it must be an awkward situation and i think there is something to be learned from both sides in this particular story that the parents need to learn that they have boundaries and that op needs to learn that they need to have some sort of empathy for the parents too and then you know things could work out and they could have some sort of normal relationship without ha this keep coming up all the time and that's just my feelings on it it might be totally wrong but i'm always happy to be educated and you know that let's move down to some comments to see what they say and i aki says you're the arsehole i understand your view here and i don't really think you're an arsehole but in this situation it is you you feel nothing for her but your parents do they raised her until she was in her second or third grade and then she died their baby died dude people say it's the worst possible thing to go through in your life they need some way to get through it so i totally understand how you might not feel anything for her yourself but in my opinion it isn't that hard to humor your parents a bit about their dead kid and ezzy may says no one's an arsehole here if you don't want to talk about her that's fine in my honest opinion it was kind of rude of your mum to keep talking about it after you repeatedly told her that you don't want to talk about her and it was probably frustrating to just have your parents stuck and focused on so far on the past you deserve her full attention too and it's frustrating for you to have to share it with someone you've never met and she's not going to stop talking about it so you could just leave whenever she does it and kitty lilith says no one's an asshole here both sides are perfectly within their rights it's just a shitty situation all around if it were me i'd apologize for hurting their feelings but mention that i have my boundary they're of course free to speak about her but you're under no obligation to engage it's been a long long time my mother died young and it traumatized me, but I went through grief counseling and found healthy ways to speak about her with my family. I don't talk about her much to people who have never met her, regardless of their relation to her or myself. And KDN says, you're the arsehole for expecting your parents to just stop with their deceased child. They raised and loved her for eight years and then lost her. That's fine if you don't want to talk about her, but you never ever get over the loss of your child. And now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation and how do you think it should be dealt with? Let me know in the comments below. Now, once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy these stories. And if you did, you know what to do. Hit that like, that subscribe, and maybe leave a comment or two. It really helps out the channel, really boosts everything. And even if you go to the very end and click on a playlist and watch a bit more, that super helps out the channel as well. <laughs> thank you so, so much for your love, support, and time. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. <laughs>